For a number of years now, an anti-Christian sentiment has been on the rise in Australia. Now, please hear me from the outset. This is not a poor us statement. Rather, it's just a statement of fact. Until recently, Australian Christians have comfortably enjoyed a culture strongly influenced by the values found in their faith, backed by a parliament that has passed fair laws based on Christian principles. But it's changing. And as to be expected, our society is changing also. And the truth of this was brought home to me starkly via this book. It's an explicit cartoon character book about sex aimed at young prepubescent children and it's available in family stores such as Big W and Target. The book is filled with what many would regard as pornographic adult content. Now I understand that thanks to the response from people like you, Big W have moved the book from the shelves to online, but can I tell you that Big W's initial response to our complaint was to state that the content of the book matches the development and early experiences of the targeted age group from 11 years old. It's a devastating consideration for any responsible adult to think through what a young child would have had to confront in their life to make them mature enough to digest the extreme information contained in this book. I refuse to even stoop to give airtime to the graphic depictions and descriptions contained in it. It also includes unscientific, highly debated gender ideology that denies reality and only serves to confuse children on the cusp of puberty. There should never be any need for young children to have to read about and understand the extreme content in this book. It should grieve the heart of all who want their children to enjoy the blessing of innocence. And this is what Jesus spoke about and advocated for. This book is a symptom of our society turning its back on the teachings of Jesus and the values he espoused. And let me explain how this is happening. A recent example is the ACT government's unprecedented takeover of the Calvary Hospital in Canberra. This was an extraordinary attack on freedom of religion and on the rights of religious health care providers to care for the sick, the frail and the aged with a pro-life ethic. Consider as well the widespread exclusion zones that now exist around abortion clinics that forbid prayer. Christian schools are also feeling the heat. Protections for parental choice in education, the exercise of religious beliefs and the provision of genuine care and support to students are all being wound back. But despite this, we continue to advocate for Christian schools to maintain the freedom to teach what Jesus taught respectfully, reasonably and yes, even counterculturally. In March, the Australian Law Reform Commission produced a discussion paper on faith-based education that was widely criticised for its anti-religious bias. And then there's the recent news that the government has removed tax deductibility status from donations to support the chaplaincy and camp program of Scripture Union, Australia's largest supplier of school chaplains. Sadly, it will be some of our most vulnerable school children who will suffer from this decision as cuts to chaplaincy services seem inevitable. The last example of a departure from Christianity I'll mention is the government's misinformation and disinformation bill, which will impose some of the most draconian controls on free speech in the Western world. Now, it's not only out of step with the Christian emphasis on freedom, but it's inconsistent with Australia's international human rights obligations and the equivalent European laws. The bill enables government bureaucrats and big tech to silence and censor speech far beyond reasonable limitation. It will, give, it will give government the power to silence religious and political speech that contradicts prevailing ideologies and political messaging. So even the Australian Human Rights Commission has expressed concerns about these laws, warning that there are inherent dangers, they say, in anybody becoming the sole arbiter of truth. The Commission went on to say that the, pro the proposed laws have the potential to legitimise attempts to restrict public debate, to censor unpopular opinions and to enforce ideological conformity in Australia. Now, for Christians, accepting the state as the arbiter of truth is a line we cannot cross. It's no secret that aspects of Christian teaching are countercultural. They can be confronting and even upsetting for some in our society. Examples would include Jesus' strong teaching on the corrupting influence of wealth, on human anthropology, on divorce and marriage. It can be challenging. But Christian values are not just about religion. They are necessary for democracy to prosper and they benefit all of society. 
The European Court got it right when it said that religious freedom is one of the most vital elements that go to make up the identity of believers and their conception of life, but it also is a precious asset for atheists, agnostics, skeptics and the unconcerned. Christians may experience social hostility, verbal abuse or even legal action. But that shouldn't be news. Jesus said that the unbelieving world will misunderstand those who follow him and that the world will be hostile to the gospel. But he said to go on following, loving, serving. Our response to disrespect should be kindness, tenderness even, forgiving as God in Christ has forgiven us. But that does not mean for a minute that we overlook evil and, and injustice. No, quite, quite the opposite. When we truly love, we will fight for what is good and right and true. So thank you for your partnership in the gospel and in our prayer that God's kingdom will come and his will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God bless you.